Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver here on our 2022 GMC Terrain. So this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like installed. Now this particular hitch here does have a hidden cross tube and what that means is the cross tube section which connects each side of our flange is actually hidden back behind the bumper here. So the only thing we actually can see is the receiver tube. Now our trailer hitch is going to have a nice black powder coated finish which is sort of a matte finish as well. And this not only helps protect the hitch from rust, it's also going to help it blend in better with the underbody paneling here on the vehicle. So adding a trailer hitch to your terrain is going to be an excellent idea because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use a trailer hitch for towing, but let's say we wanted to hit some trails or just simply free up some space inside the vehicle for us and the family. On those long road trips, we could easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or hitch mounted cargo carrier. So this is a class three hitch, which has a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Now this is gonna be great because that two inch by two inch opening is an industry standard and it's widely compatible with a lot of those aftermarket bike rack and cargo carrier options. So you're gonna have plenty to choose from. So our trailer hitch is gonna provide us with a 4,500 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward. And it also has a 675 pound tongue weight rating. That's the downward force on the receiver. Now keep in mind these capacities are for the hitch only which is actually tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore you do need to verify your vehicle's towing capacity in your owner's manual and abide by the lower of the two rated components whether that's the hitch or the vehicle. So on the side of our receiver tube we're going to have a 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole. It's going to work great with our 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Now keep in mind the hitch pin and clip is sold separately, it doesn't come with the hitch. And the reason for that is a lot of your accessories are actually going to come with their own. But if you do need one, we have plenty of options here at eTrailer. And then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube, we have our safety chain loops. Those work great with both the larger Clevis style hooks, as well as the smaller S-type. So we got a couple of measurements for you guys here. They're gonna help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. You're looking at about 12 inches, so right at one foot. Now keep in mind, um, this measurement could vary depending on your trim level, your tire size, the cargo you have in the vehicle. And we're gonna be using this to select a ball mount so we can make sure we get the correct rise and drop. And then we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. And for this particular vehicle, you're looking at right about five inches. So keep that in mind when you're selecting your folding accessories. That way you can make sure that while they're in the stowed position, they don't hit the vehicle. So in regards to installation, this one is very straightforward. There's no modifying to the vehicle whatsoever. You can probably just get this done with some common hand tools. There is one tool you're gonna need you may not have, and that's a torque wrench, but you can actually rent this for free from most local auto parts stores. I would guess it's probably gonna take you guys around an hour or two, depending on your experience level, but don't worry, you guys don't have to jack the vehicle up into the air or anything. You can certainly still do it on the ground. With that being said, we'll go ahead and walk you through the entire process step by step now. So the first step of our installation, we need to take a T15 Torx bit because there's going to be two Torx screws here on the underside of our bumper fascia. So we'll just go ahead and remove those now. There we go, just like that. We're going to have an exhaust hanger bracket on either side that we need to remove. Now there's gonna be two bolts holding the exhaust hanger bracket to the body of the vehicle, and they're located behind the bumper here, so it is kind of hard to see, but they're basically just running in like so. If you take a look underneath, you can see the back side of the bolts. So here's the back side of those two bolts there. We're just gonna take a 15 millimeter socket and remove those both, and then you sort of have to pry the hanger out and away from the stud. We got those two out. Now just go ahead and push the hanger off that little metal keeper. But now that we have this side done, go ahead and do that same thing on the other side. So now we're gonna have a metal exhaust hanger we need to remove from a rubber isolator. It's located in the center of our exhaust here, just directly below that rear cross member. Before we break that free, we need to take some sort of support device. We're in the air, so we're just using a cam buckle strap. I'm gonna hook it to two sides of the coil springs and pull that tight. And that's just gonna provide support here when we break that hanger free. If you guys are working on the ground, just use a jack stand, couple blocks of wood, really whatever you have. So in order to help us remove the metal hanger from the rubber isolator, it's a good idea to take some sort of spray lubricant and spray it down. It's gonna make things much easier to work with. 
But now we can come back with either a pry tool or if you have a specialized exhaust hanger removal tool, you could certainly use that. But you guys are probably gonna have a pry tool, it works just as well. So now that we have our exhaust loose, I'm gonna kind of peel back the bumper fascia on either side here. That way our hangers can come down below that. And that's gonna give us a little bit more room to work when we go to raise our hitch into position. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come inside to either frame rail, it doesn't matter which side we start with. We're gonna be starting on the driver's side and we're gonna locate our access hole. So here's what our access hole looks like. And you can see that we have our actual three attachment holes right here. So our access hole, what we need to do is we need to file either side. You can see how we kind of have a divot in either side here. And the reason we need to do that is we need to have clearance for our spacer block to get through there along with our carriage bolt. Now we've already went ahead and done this for you, but it is super easy. We just take a file here and you just grind away some of the metal on either side of that access hole. Keep doing that until you have enough clearance for both of your pieces of hardware. So now it's time to get our hardware into the frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of our fish wires here. We're gonna grab a spacer block and then we're gonna grab a carriage bolt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be sticking the coiled end of our fish wire through that access hole. We're actually gonna be sticking it through the hole we want the bolt to come through and then out the access hole. So let's jump underneath and show you that now. So we've already got two of our bolts into the frame here. Now we are on the driver's side. The driver's side is gonna use this hole, this hole, and then this hole here directly in the, directly behind the bumper flange there. So that's the only one they have left over here. So I'm just gonna take the quilt in there of our pull wire. I'm gonna feed it up through that hole. And then I'm gonna try to fish it out as best as I can through our access hole. Now it can be kind of tricky to get that out of there. So you may wanna actually pre-bend the wire but sometimes you can get it out as long as you just stick your finger up there and kind of grab it. There we go. Now I'm going to place on a spacer block and a carriage bolt. I'm going to stick the spacer block through our access hole, follow that up with our carriage bolt, and pull it the rest of the way through. So now that we have the driver's side done, we'll just go ahead and repeat these same few steps over on the passenger side. So now with an extra set of hands, we can go ahead and set our hitch into position. You do need to come up and over the exhaust first. And once you get it in place, you'll just go ahead and stick your pull wires through each of the holes. So for the center one here, make sure you're in the oblong hole. Now we'll go ahead and hold our hitch into position. You're gonna pull off your pull wires and then you'll thread on your flange nut. And you only need one on each side to hold it in place. And then you can repeat the same process there for your remaining fasteners. So now that we have all of our hardware installed, we'll go ahead and snug it up here using a three quarter inch socket. Now we're going to come back with our torque wrench here and torque everything down to spec. Now don't forget to go ahead and raise your exhaust back up into position and then re-secure your fascia tabs. So now that we have everything torqued down, that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver here on our 2022 GMC Terrain.